Multiple reports have dropped today revealing the Toronto Raptors have made multiple signings to the main roster. That's right, we got a couple of Woj bombses, Shams bombses after the trade deadline as the Toronto Raptors filled up that final two roster spot positions. Didn't go to Jonte Porter, didn't go to one of our current two-way players. So we'll break down what this means, whether or not they could be on the team long term, and how it will affect the direction of this team moving forward. But before we dive into that, folks, again, I really appreciate all the support, all the guy people that are coming in that are new old checking out the latest on the toronto raptors with all of the changes that have been going on but if you're new and you're a part of the 56 percent of viewers that haven't subscribed just yet it would mean the world to us if you guys could hit that subscribe button but let's dive into the news because again i'm spamming the Woj bomb animation here right now because Toronto Raptors have made a couple of signings. Obviously, not the big moves like Bruce Brown or something. The Raptors did make a lot of moves. There's for sure Masai Ujiri, without a doubt, definitely cooked this, uh, this trade deadline. But we picked up a couple guys to fill out those roster spots that opened up once we dealt away Dennis Schroeder as well as Thaddeus Young. As basically the first report that came out revealed that the free agent, free agent forward uh, Justice Winslow is signing a 10-day deal with the Toronto Raptors, sources tell ESPN. Winslow has been playing for the Raptors 905 G League team. Now, the G League team, the prospects, people are always kind of roast when I say the prospects. People in the Raptors 905 that aren't necessarily attached to the main roster, it's avenues like this. It's moments like these where this is where they can potentially get called up to the main group, get signed when moves happen, if they're balling out, if they're playing well in the G League. And I've made a couple of videos on Justice Winslow coming up with the main group, given how well he's been playing as of late for the Raptors 905. And frankly... I'm pretty pumped about him joining the main roster. Looking at his stats, you know, over the course of his career, just as intangibles, I mean, he's only 27 years old, even though it feels like he's been in the league forever, especially to Toronto Raptors fans, because we can point back to the two, uh, the 2016 series against the Miami Heat, where Justice Winslow had a significant impact in that one there. But Winslow, again, 27, about to be 28 years old, eight points per game over the course of his career, five rebounds, three assists, not the greatest three-point shooter, but definitely someone that's not Ben Simmons from behind the three-point line, can knock down threes at a decent, decent clip, and is also, you know, a guy that has unfortunately dealt with some injuries over the course of his career, but is definitely a steady NBA vet, you know, at one point, averaging 13 points per game at just 22 years old, there were moments where Justice Winslow had a, a lot of promise and a lot of potential in the NBA, even last season for the Portland Trailblazers, people really liked him down in Portland, he's a forward that plays really, really strong defense, he's a guy that can facilitate at that forward spot as well, has a great feel for the game, makes good decisions, gets a few turnovers here now and then, and has been on the Raptors 905, and playing pretty well as of late. He had an explosive game that I sort of broke out. He will roast me, call him prospect. He's a prospect for the Toronto Raptors. He's a potential future Toronto Raptor. Get the development, get his health under straight. And for the Raptors 905, he's been pretty good. I mean, you know, again, played 13 games, not a massive sample size. His box score is a little bit different, but 17 points per game for the Toronto Raptors 905, averaging eight rebounds per night, averaging three assists, averaging 2.2 steals, as well as a block a game. Three turnovers, which a bit of a lot, that assist to turnover ratio is not that great, but again, he's not going to be asked to do a whole ton with this main Raptors roster group. The Raptors Right now, in terms of forward depth, you know, threes and fours, obviously we have Scotty Barnes. Chris Boucher has fallen out of favor with the Raptors lineup. Jonte Porter, given his floor spacing, probably could play the four for some teams, but Justice Winslow at a very solid 6'6", six, six, lots of strength, great defensive acumen, can come in and have an impact on this Toronto Raptors team at the forward spot. Is he going to do a lot of floor spacing? Probably not. Is he going to get minutes a bunch of, uh, above a bunch of guys that are currently on this team? You know, the Bruce Browns, the Gary Trents, the Grady Dicks. You know, we're more natural twos. Just Winslow's more of a three, maybe a small ball four. But just as Winslow, I think if the Raptors need some more defense, need some more of what we lost with OG and Anobi, I like what Winslow could potentially be able to provide for this main roster. And if he can stay healthy for this group, if he can stay healthy for this team, and he can have an impact in the second half of the season, he's not one of those prospects that you kind of uh, hear, they come and go with the wind, right? They might sign in for a 10-day, they might do this, they might do that. I think Justice Winslow actually has staying power within the Toronto Raptors organization, and hopefully can have an impact, especially on the defensive end, for this team for the near future. Because it seems like the tank is over. We got our anti-tank missiles right now, Kelly Olenek and, you know, Baji, but I'm pretty pumped to see what he's able to do with the main roster. But 
He's not the only guy we signed. His news also came out uh, from Shams the Athletic. The Toronto Raptors are signing uh, forward Mo Mo Gay from uh, for a 10-day contract out of the Raptors 905. Muhammad Gay, and basically he's part of the G League affiliate. And Gay averaged uh, 14 points per game, eight rebounds, and was among the G League's block leaders out over two per game. So again, the Raptors have a ton of guards right now a ton of sort of shooting guards and stuff it's a part of the reason we dealt away Schroeder and uh, cut Spencer Dinwiddie but adding some forward depth is huge and especially if uh, Chris Boucher has fallen out of favor he's not going to get his run again bringing in a couple more guys on the actual main roster that uh, play the same position probably isn't a great sign for Chris Boucher but Bobby Webster did speak out and say that uh, Chris Boucher is a guy that always finds his way back into the rotations is always an impact player and you know even though he can't pass that well so he doesn't fit Darko system as much as maybe a Nick Nurse system I, I still believe in Chris Boucher. He's a very solid player and, you know, a guy that I, I wouldn't mind getting some more run. But Mom Gay is a guy that hustles as well, similar to Chris Boucher. You know, blocks a lot of shots. We can dive into his stats here as well. I mean, for this season for the Toronto Rap for the Raptors, 905 has stepped up his game, you know, even from last year. He's only 25 years old himself, right? Uh, 14 points per night. You know, six, uh, six rebounds specifically for the 905. You know, the 2.4 blocks per game is really the huge part of this. I'm pumped to see what he's able to do on the defensive end. Because, again, we brought in Kelly Olenek. We brought in, uh, you know, a few guys, 6'9", 210, you know, 25 years old, undrafted. We brought in a lot of guys. We brought in a lot of players at this trade deadline, if you include all the Pascal, the OG, and Anobi packages. And I think we lost a significant amount of defense, even though I think we... Improved might be a stretch because giving away Pascal Siakam was the clear number one option. But uh, offensively, I think we were sorted out. We have a lot of high potential young players in that position that can potentially blossom with a bigger role on this Toronto Raptors team. Defensively, I think and arguably we definitely took a step back. You know, some younger guys, some great athletes. I'm interested to see how Abaji plays on that defensive end. But defensively, you know, we're not really there. So Justice Winslow to where we were with OG and Pascal and all these guys that are veterans, high IQ athletes that can definitely play some high-level defensive basketball. You know, at a championship level, we've seen Pascal, we've seen OG and Anobi do it. With these two acquisitions, again, we're not bringing in uh, trailblazers. We're not bringing, I guess, Justice Winslow's a former trailblazers, but guys that are going to go nuclear on the offensive end, maybe Winslow could shock us, but we're bringing in two guys that can be very strong defenders for this Toronto Raptors team have high, high upside, even though they're not super young. But if things go right, if things end up shaking out, and again, you have them for 10 day contracts, so if things go brutal or more opportunities arise, you can easily cut them, you can easily let them go and figure out someone else. We, we're going to elevate our level of defensive play, even if it's just only in practice. If you're bringing in a veteran like Injustice Winslow, a sort of young vet that uh, can fit this timeline, you know, the age of Bruce Brown, but uh, facilitates, can do a lot of things out there on the basketball court. Gay, who can, you know, block a lot of shots, play some defense, you know, have that sort of wiry frame underneath the basket. And the Raptors sort of lose some players. We're not going to be depleted of uh, depth. Same way we were when John T. Porter and Yaka Pearl were out of the lineup. So, I don't know. I think this is a solid acquisition, especially where they're both 10-day contracts. You have flexibility if they're not working out. I'm really interested to see if, especially Winslow, gets some run with this Raptors group, given the lack of sort of natural forwards that we have on this team but let me know what you guys think about the toronto raptors sort of acquisitions here today you guys are best making this far subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already anyways i'm signing out cheers